Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Bank Shop Breakdown. We're going to go over five college basketball games for Monday, December 18th, 2023. Now, if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your college basketball picks in the comment section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my $19 Bank Shop best bet, you can find those at the Premium Picks tab at PickDogs.com. Alrighty, let's get into it. Here are the games for Monday in college basketball. First up, we see Quinnipiac taking on Holy Cross. This one's going to be 7 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be on ESPN+. Plus. Now, we've taken we've uh, looked at Quinnipiac games, the last two of them, against Navy and Yale. We took Navy plus the points, and uh, Navy was able to cover for us in a 71-68 final score. But then we took Quinnipiac plus the points against Yale, and they covered for us uh, in a 73-66 final score. So now, we see Quinnipiac taking on Holy Cross after a week off, and I like Quinnipiac in this matchup. I think it benefits them here. I think Holy Cross, one of the weakest Division I teams, if not a bottom five Division I team this season. They have two wins, and one of those was a Georgetown upset victory. We talked about that when Holy Cross was matched against Boston College. This is not the same team. You know, I think that Holy Cross caught Georgetown and kind of by surprise at the beginning of the season. It was only the second game of the year for Georgetown in a new program, new look team, new system. And, uh, you know, Holy Cross, give them credit for the nice win, but Going forward, I still don't love this Holy Cross team. We saw them get blown out to Boston College 95-64. to Defensively, this could be the worst team in college basketball. They're 360th in adjusted defensive efficiency. They don't force turnovers, and they have a very bad three-point defense. That benefits Quinnipiac. You know, Quinnipiac, we started to see them get going from three-point land in their last game against Yale. They were 11 of 31 from three. They took a ton of threes in that game. Solid 35.5 percentage. And Matt Balanc, who's you know one of the big key players for this Quinnipiac team, he was 5 of 11, one of his best shooting performances of the season from three-point land. Last year, uh, Quinnipiac was top 100 in three-point shooting. That's how important I think it is for the Bobcats to really get going from the perimeter. And this is a perfect matchup for them as Holy Cross gives up a ton of threes, a ton of points from three-point land. And uh, Quinnipiac offensively should be fine in this game. The defense, it's not my favorite, but they are a really good defensive rebounding team and they're disciplined. They don't take a lot of fouls. So while Holy Cross should have some, you know, some offense in this game, I don't think it's going to be enough to keep up consistently for 40 minutes. Give me Quinnipiac in this one. I'm going to lay the points. Next up, we see Maine and UCF. This one's going to be 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN+. Now, you know, in this matchup, it looks like a really good spot for UCF's defense to shine. I mean, this is already a really strong defense. 26 in the country in just the defensive efficiency. They force a ton of tough shots and a ton of turnovers. They're also really strong on the defensive glass, and they have the 15th-ranked two-point defense, which is really important against Maine because this is a team that gets a large majority of its scoring from two-point shots, two-point field goals, 54.5% uh, of their points from two-point field goals. So I think while Maine's on a, you know, a four-game win streak, I do think the offense really struggles in this game. This is not a very good offensive rebounding team. Their shooting numbers are okay so far, but they have played a pretty weak schedule, 339th in uh, strength of schedule this season. So this is probably their toughest game of the year, certainly their toughest defense that they've uh, played against this season. I think UCF should you know have its fair share of scoring, but Maine's defense is nothing to you know to uh, question. And this is a solid defense, 136 in adjusted defensive efficiency. They force turnovers. They're strong in the defensive glass. Pretty responsible team. Good against a three-point shot. So while I think UCF wins this game and wins it comfortably, I don't think it's going to be an outright, you know, just demolition. I think it's going to be a respectable game, a low-scoring game. It's why I like the under here in Maine UCF. Next up, we see Murray State and Little Rock. This one, 7:30 Eastern on ESPN Plus. And when you look at Murray State, they're three and seven this season. They've lost four straight games. They've lost seven of their last eight. Looks like really rough times for Murray State. You know, it hasn't been pretty, but I do think because of those results, because of that record, we're getting actually a really good price with Murray State, who I still think is the much better team in this matchup. I think we're getting a really good price with them here, and I'm going to take them on the money line. You know, Murray State, I think, will be sharper as the season goes along. There's a lot of talent on this roster, more so on the offensive side. You know, the defense still has a lot of question marks, but the good thing for Murray State is they're playing a team with an equally as inefficient defense, or if not worse, the, you know, in Little Rock, they're 331st in adjusted defensive efficiency, and Little Rock does one thing well defensively, and that's forced turnovers, but Murray State takes care of the ball. They're only they're 19th in the country in turnover percentage offensively, only losing the ball just under 14% of the time. So I think Murray State's going to be fine offensively. This is a good shooting team. I expect a guy like Rob Perry, the uh, former uh, Stetson transfer, I expect him to get going from three-point land. This guy shot 44% with Stetson in his first year. This season, only 30.9%. He should be sharper from the perimeter as the season goes along. I think Murray State scores a ton of points in this game, and they win it outright. So give me Murray State. I'll take him on the money line. 
Next up, we see Southern Miss and Lamar. This one's going to be 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN+. Now, we took Lamar in their last game against ULM, Louisiana Monroe, and that was an absolute blowout for Lamar, 97-73, perhaps their best performance of the season, especially offensively, against a Division I team. And, and one of the reasons why I really like Lamar in that game was because this team takes a ton of threes. They're not always the easiest of shots. You know, they're pretty low percentage shots, but, hey, they're making them so far. They're fourth in the country in three-point shooting. Normally, I'd say, you know, that's not sustainable, and they're due for some regression, so they may be a bit overvalued in a spot like this. However, against you, ULM, you know, Louisiana Monroe going into that game gave up a ton of points. Their opponents were scoring a ton of points from the perimeter, you know, and now you look at Louisiana Monroe after that game against Lamar, they're actually 17th most in terms of, or excuse me, 22nd most in terms of the percentage of points that their opponents are scoring from three-point range. 37.4% of opponent scoring is at the three-point line against ULM. So then you enter Southern Miss, another team that is struggling to defend the three-point line. 336 in three-point defense overall, conceding a 37.6% percentage to their opponents from the three-point line. And hey, they're also giving up in total, in terms of the points they're giving up, 36.4% uh, of those points they're giving up from the three-point line to their opponents. That's 28th most in the country. This looks like another juicy spot for Lamar at home. Uh, they're shooting the ball really well from three, and this is a great matchup for them on paper, in my opinion. Like I said, Lamar may not be the most you know, fundamentally strong team. We're going to get value fading this team eventually as the regression will come, but I don't think it's in a spot like this. Give me Lamar. Next up, we see a final game for Monday's card in college basketball, Portland State and Fresno State. This one, late game, 10 p.m. Eastern. Now, Portland State, I think, is a program on the rise, one of the more improved programs this season so far. I mean, last year, this was a 12-19 team overall and 6-11 and in conference play in the big sky. But so far this season, they're 8-3, and three, and they have some nice wins on the resume. It hasn't been all cupcakes. They have the 154th toughest schedule, which is, you know, right around nation average in non-conference play. They have some top 200 wins in true road games against Air Force, UC Santa Barbara, and Cal Baptist. And, uh, you know, and they also took down uh, Portland earlier this season. They were competitive against Washington State on the road. This is a solid Portland State team, and they don't always get a chance to beat teams in the Mountain West and teams like Fresno State. And while Fresno State's 6-4, and four, I don't love this team. They played a pretty weak schedule overall, including their last three games. They were all at home against Idaho State, Pacific, and Cal State Bakersfield. Doesn't really test Fresno State at all. When they played step-up games, they have struggled. They lost 85-56 to against BYU, lost by 4 to UC Santa Barbara, the same UC Santa Barbara that Portland State beat, and they lost by 31 to James Madison. Now, you know, the question is, is this a step-up game against Portland State? I think it is. Portland State's a solid team this year. They're ranked 155th in Kempom. They don't turn the ball over much. Their defense is strong. I like them in this spot. I think this is actually a really good matchup for Portland State to pick up a strong win on their resume. So give me Portland State. I'll take them on the, uh, getting the points, but I think they win the game outright. And that's it. Those are the games for Monday in college basketball. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to put your college basketball picks in the comment section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Ronelli. Good luck.